I don't like the pixelate option that VideoLeap has to blur faces. So I'll show you how you can hide faces using emojis like this. The first thing I'm going to do after I've loaded my clip into a project is tap on it to select it so that I can resize and reposition it. Zoom and pinch to resize and reposition the clip until you're happy with it. The next thing I need to do is remove the audio from this clip because I'm going to replace it later. To do that, I'll leave the clip selected like it is, swipe over, and tap on audio. Then when I do, you'll see an unlink option. I'm going to tap on that and delete the audio. Once that's done, I'll play the clip to the point where my subject looks directly at the camera. This will make it easier for me to place the emoji on the screen. Once I arrive at that point, right about here, I'll swipe over after selecting the clip and tap on split. This will split the footage into two separate clips. Since I want the clip to start here, I'll delete the half on the left. The clip now starts where my subject is looking directly at the camera. Next, I'll play the clip once more. This time, I want to check for any movement of my subject's head. This will help me with keyframing, which I'll get to in just a little bit. I'll scrub back to the beginning of the clip and do this several times to make sure that I'm aware of how my subject moves her head. Next, I'll add a text layer so that I can put an emoji over top of my video clip. Make sure that the text layer covers the entire video. And then double tap where it says double tap to edit. When the keyboard appears, long press on the globe in the lower left hand corner and select emoji to bring up your emoji keyboard. Here you can select any emoji you like. I'm just going to use a smiley face. Tap an emoji to select it and it will appear in the white box. Use two fingers to resize and position the emoji over the face that you want to hide. It might look a little big at first, but remember that your subject may move their face as they begin to talk. That looks good. Now I need to play the clip. Once you've repositioned your emoji, Play the clip and watch the video for any movement where the head of your subject separates from the emoji. Mine looks pretty good, however notice as the video ends, my subject's face is visible, so I'll have to use some keyframes. So I'll scrub back to the beginning of the video clip, expand out the text layer so that I can see it, and drop a keyframe right at the beginning of the clip. This is the start position. I'll play the clip once more and move the emoji if the face becomes visible. Each time I do, a keyframe will be added.
I'll continue to play the clip and reposition the emoji as needed. This may take several passes. Notice at the end, the face becomes visible. So I'm gonna have to place a keyframe right here. I'll tap on the keyframe marker to add a keyframe manually. And as the video plays, I'll simply drag my emoji over so that it covers the face. Like this. Notice another keyframe has been added. That looks good. I'll play the clip once more to check the final placement of all the keyframes. Watch your video while it plays and make adjustments to any keyframes as needed. To expand the text layer, just tap on the text balloon thumbnail. Notice as the playhead passes over each keyframe, the position of the emoji will correct itself to follow the motion of the face of my subject. The motion tracking and keyframes look great. The emoji follows the face of my subject throughout the entire video clip and the face remains invisible the entire time. For more great tutorials like the one you just saw, check out the links in the video description or one of these recommended videos.